This is a flaming star. This is another flaming star. But they do not look cool enough. We need a more impressive one, like this. In this video, we'll image a flaming star nebula for several nights from our backyard. We'll spend one night in the desert, but that'll be cut short by something unexpected. We'll of course give you some astro tips here and there, and also we'll dance with a spider. Yes, you heard that right. we're using, the SBX130, can be pretty heavy with all the attachments, and also very difficult to grab, so I'm glad Dahlia can assist me when placing it on the mount. So we were imaging this target more than a year ago, but as you can see here, there was so much tilt that we kind of gave up on it. Tilt is a very, very annoying in astrophotography, especially if you have a full frame camera, because it can take many, 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 many sleepless nights to find out what was wrong. Could it have been the camera? Could it have been the field flattener? I don't know, the one of the many adapters. It's hell. It ruins your life, almost. <laughs> Tilt issues are, in my opinion, one of the worst things you can deal with in this hobby and uh, that's why we kind of uh, stopped imaging the flaming star last year. But we fixed the tilt um, a few weeks after that, and now we're back at imaging the flaming star. So ideally we should probably uh, delete all the files with tilt from last year and start fresh, but um, let's be crazy and add everything together and see what happens. That's a big yikes. <laughs> let's see what happens. So tonight we're going to do HA and S2 and we're going to do it from our backyard which is still in Las Vegas and although there's a lot of light pollution we can still get great results even from our backyard. And then we'll do O3 from the desert. Uh, I plan to go tomorrow myself and uh, spend one night of O3 from there from the Boral 3 zone and then we'll come back here and then uh, just finish up from home HA and S2 uh, just to round it up. So the Fleming Star Nebula is I see four or five, I believe, yes, four or five, and the Tadpoles Nebula, which is next to it, is I see four ten. See, the Tadpoles Nebula is right here, which is a second nebula. It is full of O3 and HA, and it is very, very blue and orange looking, so it's perfect, it's very colorful. That's why I want it in there. Um, but I also want, of course, the main, um, the main object here, which is a Flaming Star Nebula. And if we go, I think it's scope display, I can turn uh, here, we can turn like that. So I'm going to attempt to frame it this way so we have both included. So the Flaming Star Nebula, uh, if you look at the info tab here, is an emission nebula and um, it looks like a star like on fire with so much gas coming out of it. So it's pretty cool. Um, it is not super easy for beginners that I know for sure. I have tried it once before in the past and it turned out terrible. Luckily for us, it stays in the sky for a long time. Let's pr pretend here, the 7 p.m., 8, 9, 10. Let me go back to it. Up oh, midnight, it flips, and then 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. So we are going to do S2 until about 2 a.m. and then that's when the moon rises and we'll switch over to do HA. So now it is started on the laptop. I am connecting uh, as usual through the nook on top there so it's wireless. So I can just go in the house or anywhere in the backyard and still control everything through here and see uh, the guiding and everything so it's pretty cool. We are doing SHO, 600 second exposures, which equals to 10 minutes each and repeats uh, infinite until sunrise. So right before launching the sequence, I went outside one last time to check on the scope and saw this little guy dancing in the wind. And I love dancing, so we had to join in. 
Well, hopefully it wasn't a rain dance. We decided to stop wasting any more precious dark minutes and slew the telescope to our target. As the telescope moved across the sky, the fate of the spider remains unknown. The night went well, as you can see here when I was checking everything on the laptop. Great single shot with plenty of details and great guiding at 0.6. The next night was spent in the desert to get O3 out of the way. So I am extremely shocked because I am currently imaging uh, the Fleming Star Nebula in O3. Uh, I drove all the way here in a bottle 3 zone to image in O3 because uh, I was doing it in HA and S2 from home. And so O3 from home is not really good because it's too uh, polluted for the filter. So O3 is always best uh, taken from a dark site. And uh, I'm really shocked because there is um, there is literally nothing. There is nothing in O3 on the Fleming Star Nebula. Look at that. This is a tadpole nebula next to it, but this is uh, where the uh, Fleming Star is supposed to be, and there is nothing. So uh, I'm not sure what to do. I think I'm just gonna going to stop uh, the O3. I might just do a bicolor uh, S2HA, which is kind of strange, uh, but I guess it would work here in this case. Um, yeah, just switch targets, I guess. Um, huh. That night in the desert felt a bit ruined because I only took 10 shots of the Fleming Star Nebula before giving up on it. But I did spend the rest of the night imaging the Rosette Nebula instead, which was unplanned. So be sure to watch out for this image on our Instagram soon. We then spent the next few clear nights imaging in HA and S2 from home. Show it again! So SGP uh, decided to be a bit stupid right after the Meridian flip when the camera was millimeters away from hitting the tripod leg and rotated 180 degrees. So of course the filter wheel got blocked midway by the leg. Luckily nothing got damaged but the data for half of this night was ruined because the angle did not match. So right now I have 24 hours um, but it's cloudy today, uh, so this morning I put everything away. Well, I left the um, mount outside with a cover on because right now it's not really hot in Vegas and there's no you know, no rain, no wind, so I think it's pretty safe. Uh, it's not going to melt or anything. So I left the mount uh, outside, took the scope inside. Um, but I really want to spend one last night on it to really round it up to 30 hours. So I'm going to try to wait for another clear night. And I think either tomorrow or the next day, we should have a clear night and we can continue and run it up to 30 hours total. The next night was supposed to be mostly clear, so we took our chances because it would be cloudy for the next few days. And we're glad that we did. Morning was all cloudy, but we got just enough data to round it all up to 30 hours. So what I do when I'm done with imaging is I transfer all the files into a SD card, which I'm going to show you right now. There's an SD card right here. So I'm going to transfer all the files in this one and then take it out. That's how I put the files on the main computer to process. But yeah, sun rising. Time to put everything away. We are done with the Fleming Storm. So I just finished processing the Fleming Star and the Tadpose Nebula image, which you can see kind of over here. Uh, so 
Uh, I was kind of afraid that there would be not enough data in O3 and then it would look a bit off, but luckily it looked just fine. Uh, by the way, I added the raw master files onto the Patreon shared folder. So by the way, if you guys want to thank us or support us uh, financially, uh, take a look at the link below for Patreon. And uh, we have a bunch of perks, including so many raw data that you can use for practicing uh, PixInsight or Photoshop or whatever you have. And uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be great. So take a look at the perks and uh, yeah, maybe you can join. So each filter gave us some great data to work with. And the image in the end was very clean. Uh, I took my time processing it. I even tried uh, a different color palette, which is kind of purple, just for fun. And it was, it was kind of cool. So I hope you guys will like our final image of the Fleming Star Nebula in the Type Pose Nebula. So I'm really happy with the image. Uh, the Tadpole Nebula and the Flaming Star Nebula are full of details and are very colorful. I'm actually glad that I spent uh, that bit of time in the desert on O3, uh, despite not having any O3 in Flaming Star because the Tadpole Nebula is really rich in O3, as you can see here. It's fully um, blue and really, really pretty. Makes a difference. Yeah. And the framing is fantastic, so I'm really overall happy with how the image turned out. And so, uh, before we say goodbye, uh, we plan to use the beginner setup, uh, like the Atlas EQG and maybe like the Mead 70 or even a DSLR camera with a, a lens soon again for some videos. I know we've been using the fancy gear. And it's uh, been great. It's been great. Because once you have a fancy gear, it's really hard not to, not to use you it. You don't want to like, you know, take a step back, but you know, our setup has always been good to us. So it's not really taking a step back. It's just incorporating yeah. that. But just so you know, we plan to actually include uh, some more beginner gear uh, in the videos soon. Yes, and also I have uh, noticed that a lot of people have said that I've not been in videos lately, and I'm sorry. When Antoine was out of the country, it really put me in a place to just take a step back and, you know, I was able to focus on myself, which was great, but it put me, you know, like Antoine, I have my own mental health things that I deal with more on the side of depression. So I feel like I'm in a better place now. The holidays have perked me up a little bit more. So I'm hoping to be around better. So we'll see you guys next time, hopefully together. And uh, kiss guys. <laughs>